Hi, this is Jesper from Velocity Peak, and in today's X Particles tutorial, we're gonna make this. So it's this kind of slow mo of particles, and uh, the particles are advected from an explosion of sorts. And uh, if you wanna follow along, all project files are available on velocitypeak.com. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, so let's start. Um, I have a very simple scene uh, set up here. I have a timeline of 120 frames. And the only other elements I have is a camera that we'll use later on for rendering. And that's it. So let's start by adding a torus. And uh, let me up this, so the ring radius. I'm going to set to 111, the ring segments. I'm gonna set to 120. I want more geometry because we're gonna use a displacer later on. So let's set this a little higher. And uh, pipe radius of 36 and pipe segments to around 50. So to display the geometry now, we can go to quick shading lines or ND for a shortcut. So this is what we have. So on top of this, let's add a displacer. So I'm gonna hold down my shift and I'm gonna go get a displacer. And in the displacer under the object tab, I'm gonna increase the height to 21. And uh, the type is set to intensity centered by default, which pushes uh, the displacement in two different directions, up and down based on the black and white values. Uh, but I wanna use this one, intensity. It's only gonna push it in one direction then. And then let's go to the shading tab and I'm gonna add a noise. And uh, we have some progress. Uh, let's go into the noise and I'm going to keep it at a standard noise, um, but I'm going to up this to 780. So it's a lot bigger and I'm going to leave everything else uh, as is except the contrast. I'm going to bring up the contrast just a little bit, like say 40. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so this is the shape that we're going to be emitting from. Now on top of that, I also want to create a texture that we can emit from. Uh, so let's do that next. Um, I want to need to see the line, so I'm going to hide the line. So I'm going to go back to quick shading like so. And uh, to create a new material, I'm going to double click in the materials manager and I'm going to put it on top of the torus. And uh, let's go into that material. And uh, I don't need to use the reflectance channel, so I'm going to turn that off. Uh, let's go to the color channel and let's add a noise again. Noise. And I can't see anything on the torus and that's because I don't have materials turned on. If you go to options, we have materials as an option or NQ for a shortcut. So let's go into the noise and the noise type I'm going to use is something called Ober. And Ober is this really nice stringy type of noise. Uh, it's too small though, so let's bring up the size to 250. So when we emit particles from this texture, it's going to be emitting from the bright area. So the, the brighter it is, the more particles are going to be emitted. Uh, so I want to lower the brightness of this a little bit. So I'm going to bring this down to minus 15, minus 16. And uh, to bring back just a little bit more grace, uh, I can decrease the contrast. I'm going to get it to minus 4. Uh, so I think this is going to work quite well to emit from. Uh, so that's done. Let's close this. And I don't need to see the material anymore, so I can use the shortcut N, Q to toggle that off. And it's time to bring in some particles. So X particles, and let's get a system in. Uh, I'm going to bring the torus on top. Uh, I just prefer to have it on top because we're referencing it later on. It doesn't really make a difference. It's just my preference. Uh, okay, so in this first emitter, we're going to have two emitters total. Uh, this first emitter is going to be the emitter that ignites the explosion. And then we're going to have another emitter that it's going to be advected from the explosion. So let's call this first emitter ignite. Like so. A funny spelling of ignite. Ignite. Uh, and in the emitter, let's go to the object tab. And uh, instead of an ellipse, let's do an object. 
And of course, we're going to use our torus. So let's bring in the torus we made. And uh, instead of polygon center, let's do polygon area so it's not as a regular. Uh, and then if I press play now, let's see what we get. So the, the particles are emitting from the torus. Now let's go to the emission tag. I, I don't want to have this continuously shoot out particles. Uh, I just want to have it happen on the first frame. So instead of a rate for emission mode, we can switch this to shot. So it's going to shoot all the particles out on frame on the first frame uh, with a duration of one frame, which is exactly what I want. But I want to have some more particles, so let's do 2,000 for that. And uh, let's uh, also up the speed. I'm going to do 175 for the speed with some variation of 75. Uh, and if we play back now, this is what, we got, what, we got, what we're getting. So it's just this shot. Good. Okay. Uh, so next, we need to ignite the explosion with this. So we need to go to the dynamic objects and add explosion effects. Let me zoom out here a little bit. Uh, so if I press play, nothing's going to happen. Uh, explosion needs something that it can ignite it. And that's what we're going to use the particles for. Now, I want to extend this box, the explosion box, a little bit so we have ample space on the sides, something like that. Uh, but we can reduce the size on the top and the bottom. And the smaller this is, the faster this is going to play back. Uh, and speaking of playback speed, if we go to the solver, the voxel size here of three centimeters is essentially the resolution um, of this. Uh, now, if you are rendering smoke and fire, then it makes a lot of sense to have this fairly low, uh, even lower than this. But because we're going to advect particles, we can up this size a little bit. So, so I'm going to do this six, and that's going to play back faster now. Uh, so um, if I play back, still nothing happens. Uh, we need to go to the XP emitter, right-click on it, and X particles tags, and then we want to say explosion source. Now that in itself is not going to be enough. If I play back now, it's still nothing is happening. And that's because we need to add some fuel to this. So if I go to my XP emitter and I go to the extended data tab, and then we have something called physical data, and then we can add all these data to the emitter. The one that I'm interested in is fuel. So I'm going to up fuel to two. And now that we play this back, we're going to get something. And there's the explosion. And you can also see that the explosion, the smoke and everything is, is rising upwards, which is how it should be in the natural world. However, I don't want it to rise. Uh, if we go to explosion effects under the simulation tab, we have a gravity slider, which isn't exactly what you ex would expect it to be. Uh, this slider is controlling the smoke buoyancy, the heat buoyancy, and the fuel buoyancy in one single slider. So if you increase this value, then the smoke is going to rise faster. But if you decrease it, it's going to be slower. And if you take it down to zero, it's not going to rise at all. So if we play this back now, we get a very different kind of look. So they're kind of shooting out in all different directions there, which is exactly what I want. Now, admittedly, this is not a very impressive explosion. It's not particularly volatile. Now, if you wanted to have a volatile uh, explosion, there are a few things that we could do. If we go to the tab, or the tag rather, one thing that we could do, for example, we can up the pressure. Now, these sliders go to 100 here, but we can actually go way beyond that. So if I go, say, 2,000 for the pressure, and I hit play, now we get a much more impressive explosion. Now, I'm going to set this to 40. A uh, little goes a long way here. Um, velocity is going to control how fast it travels. I'm going to set that up to 200. Uh, so right now, we have this. So it still really isn't very impressive at all if you want to have a real explosion. Uh, but one thing that you could do if you wanted to have a, a really impressive explosion, we go back to the emitter 
and to the emission tab. The radius is three centimeters, and this really corresponds to in, in Explosia under the solver, the voxel size that I was talking about, the resolution. So right now the particles are just too small to trigger uh, an impressive explosion. So if you wanted to have a bigger explosion, we can go back to the uh, the radius setting for the particles and say 20, for example. And now that we play it back, it's going to be a lot more impressive or a lot more volatile. But the effect that I'm going for actually calls for a really small, a really small explosion. So I'm going to set this back to two. So this is going to be the final result. Okay, so from this, I want to advect some particles. And I don't, I don't need to see the uh, ignite particles, so I'm just going to hide them. And uh, I'm going to go to the emitter object here in, um, in the system, and I'm going to create a new emitter. And this one I'm going to call advected, like so. And then I'm going to go to explosion effects, and I'm going to go to the advection tab, and then we need to enable advection. And we, we can uh, control all these channels with the advection, smoke, burn, temperature. But I only want to use one channel. So I'm going to disable all channels except velocity. Let's take all this away. Just leave velocity. Uh, so now it's going gonna, it's gonna to advect. But we need to do a couple of changes in this advect emitter as well. So first of all, under the object tab, we want to emit from the same torus. So instead of an ellipse, let's go and get an object. And then the object's going to be that same torus. But we want to emit from not the polygon center, not the polygon area like we did with the ignite particles. We want to use a texture. And when we say that, we get an extra tab, the texture tab. So we have a slot here. We need to bring in the texture. So let's take the texture and bring it into this slot. And uh, the defaults are going to work perfectly for us in this case. Uh, the emit channel is using the color channel, and the color channels are using the color channel. And these color these channels are referring to what we have inside of the noise and our over noise. So that's perfect. Now let's also go to the emission tab and uh, set of rate. This is going to emit on the first frame only. So let's do shot and. Uh, the shot count is a thousand, which is not nearly enough. Uh, we're going to go way higher later, but for now, let's set this to 50,000. And also speed. I don't want any speed. All the speed is going to come from the explosion effects. So let's set speed down to zero. And uh, let's do a radius of two and a variation of one. Uh, so now let's play this back and see what we get. Uh, it's actually a little hard to see. Uh, let's hide explosion effects. We just need to have it active. We don't need to see it. And that uh, we can hide the torus as well. Uh, so this is the effect that we're getting now. Let me play it back from the beginning. And that's the base setup for this. Now, keep in mind that we're getting uh, frames per second of around nine frames per second. Well, <laughs> let's play it. So around nine frames per second is what we're getting. So this is going to be a lot quicker when we play this back real time. Um, now, one thing right now is because we set this to advection, it's actually affecting the original uh, emitter as well. Uh, I'm going to leave that in, but if you want to, in most cases, you actually don't want that in. So then what you probably want to do is you want to go to the modifiers, and then you can just simply exclude this. So then the original emitter is not going to be uh, advected as well. But in this case, I'm actually going to leave it in. And uh, I want to retime this now. So what I want to happen is I'm going to go to around frame 20, and then I'm going to stop and have it be a lot slower. So the way I'm going to do that is that if I go to Explosia and to the Simulation tab, we have Sim Speed. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to keyframe the sim speed, but I want to control this. Uh, I want to control the sim speed in Explosia, but I also want to control it inside of the advected particles. So we can connect them via Expresso, 
Um, but we don't actually need to write any Expresso. It's really easy. So if I go down to Sim Speed, right click, Expressions, and say Set Driver. And then I go to XP Emitter Advected, go to the Object tab, and go to the Emitter tab. We have something called Retiming. If I right click on that and say Expressions, Set Driven Absolute. Then uh, X, particle, X particles created an Expresso for us automatically, which is basically connecting these two. It's a really simple Expresso setup. So let's go to Explosion Effects and on frame, let's go to frame 20. And then I'm going to set a keyframe. And notice this little icon. This indicates that it's connected via Expresso. So I'm going to set a sim speed of 100% on frame 20. I'm going to hit the G key four times. So I am now on frame 24. And then let's set a sim speed of five and the keyframe. So now if I play this back, we're going to get rising, rising, and then it's going to go a lot slower. Now we can control the look of that as well if we go to the F curve. So if I right click on this animation, uh, show F curve, I'm going to select this top keyframe, just make more of a linear, um, linear keyframe. And uh, I can have more of an ease in on this if you want. Like so. Uh, and uh, occasionally your uh, keyframes might be, uh, they might be connected, the handles might be connected. So if you want to have individual controls over the keyframes, you can break the tangents. If that happens to you, just good to know. Uh, let's close this and uh, let's play back again and see what we get. So I think that looks pretty good. Uh, the next step now is to render this. And uh, let's go to the camera that I set up beforehand. Uh, so let's look through it. And this is just a 15 millimeter camera. And uh, I've added a Cycles 4D uh, tag onto it. Just a little bit of depth of field, not a lot, just a little bit. And uh, I am going to go to the advected and uh, I'm going to right click and say Cycles 4D tags and Cycles instance. So we can render this in Cycles. And while we could render the spheres, I could reduce the amount of segments for each sphere. Uh, but we, what can, we can also do is we can just add a cube and use this as a particle. And because the particles are going to be so small, we might as well use a cube, uh, which is lighter and geometry wise. And I'm just going to do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0.5, 0.5 for the size. Now the cube is is in the scene, so to and it needs to be in the scene to work. Um, but what we can do is we can just scoot it over like ten thousand on the X, so we we don't see it. It's there, but we can't see it. And and uh, that's about it. So I'm gonna switch my layout, and I'll be back. Okay, so this is my Cycles 4D layout, uh, and I have the Node Editor on the left side the real-time preview windows in the center. And then we have um, the perspective view here and the objects manager on the bottom right. Uh, so I need to create a material here. So I'm going to go to the Cycles 4D menu. And this is the new updated Cycles 40. It came out two days ago. I think it's called 500 or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to do surface and then I'm just going to do emission. And uh, I need to put this material on the cube because we're going to reference the cube as the particle. And if I go down to the cycles instance, uh, we can see that we have an object slot. So I'm going to take the cube and I'm going to drag it in. And now cycles is going to use this cube as the particle. So. We have something there. Let me just get some extra space. Maybe something like that. Uh, so that's good. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and go to the node editor. Uh, what I want is I want to use the information from the particles. Uh, so I'm going to say input and then uh, particle info. 
And the particle info is going to be color. So I'm going to take the color and put it inside of the emission. And now we're going to use that black and white over um, noise texture that we set up before. Now this is a huge node, so we can save some space. If we right click, we can say uh, hide unused sockets. I'm not going to use any more ports. We might as well get some extra space there. Uh, okay, so I don't want to use these colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say converter color ramp. I'm going to pipe that in between the color, the particle info and the, and the emission. And then let's set some colors. So yeah, let's get some space. Always a problem when you have, when you're recording on a small screen. But uh, so I'm going to set the first one to be like a, like a purple pinkish material. Of course, this is all, this is all to taste. There's no right or wrong here. It's just me playing around. Um, I'm going to do like a bluish material there. And let's get some saturation. And it just put something in the middle. Um, maybe a little bit more bluish like that. Something like that. Uh, I mean, this is all up to you. You can play around with this all day long. Uh, so that's the, the beginning look. Now, I also want to make sure that I make these particles a little smaller. And remember, we are going to add more particles. Right now, we're just doing this because it's a little quicker to render and, and um, change values. But I'm going to up this to 700,000 particles in a few seconds here. Uh, but I am going to go to the Cycles instance, and uh, I'm going to do a size multiplier of 10, so it's going to be a lot smaller, but I'm going to do size variation of 25. So now we don't have a lot, but what we can do, we can increase the uh, emission strength to, say, 5 to start with. It's something we can do, and it starts looking nicer already. Now, another thing that I like to do um, when we deal with particles, especially in emission node, is that if we right click and get another shader, I'm going to get an add shader. And then I'm going to get a uh, shader. I'm going to get a, um, a transparent uh, shader. I like to mix transparent with the emission. So basically, we have an add shader here. And if I pipe this in now, we're going to get the best of both worlds to a certain degree. And that usually looks really, really nice when you bring in some transparency in this as well. Uh, and an add shader just adds them together. Instead of a mix shader, which you mix between the shaders, it's either a mix 50% or one is full on, one is full off. This one adds them on top of each other. Uh, so this is going to be the base for it. So now let's go and add more particles. I'm going to go back to the advected material, to the emission, and uh, let's scroll up here. And I'm going to get 700,000. We don't get that full amount because we are advecting or we are emitting from a texture, but it's still going to be a lot more. So I'll play this back now. It's going to take a little longer to play back. And let's stop it around frame 25 or so, like so. And then let's play. And here we go. So with more particles, obviously, this emission is a little too strong. So I'm going to set it to 0.5. And uh, yeah, I like that. So I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy with that. And uh, we don't need a lot of samples for this. It's mostly for the depth of field. This is pretty quick to render. If I set up the samples to say 20 and get some extra space, set this to 100%, then uh, uh, this is uh, the final result. So it renders really, really quickly. That brings this tutorial to an end. Uh, and if you come up with something cool using these techniques, please send me a link. I'd like to see it. And uh, all these project files are available on velocitypeak.com.
Thank you for sticking around and I'll see you next time.